Good afternoon and happy Friday and welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Lauren Coleman here with Maddie Gardner, Jalen Gilkey, and Tim Buckley today. Hey I there. love Friday. I do too. Oh and yeah. I love that you guys are joining us here on the 4 to 5. If you're watching on TV, you can also watch on our Facebook page. Just head on over to WFMY News 2 and join our conversation there. Yeah, but make sure you join us. Are y'all coordinating here like we had pink the other day so and now blue today? They it's left us great. out again, Tim. 30 seconds ago, we were just talking about this like, oh, we did it again, yeah. but it was not on purpose. Oh, I see. But they you know what they say, chemistry. great minds. They think alike. We're on the same wavelength. Mm. Same wavelength. Well, maybe That's we great. can all we're get on the same wavelength Tim. next week. <laughs> y'all get it together. You're making us look bad. <laughs> Sorry. It's a guy thing. Well, we have a lot to talk about today, so let's go ahead and get to the latest with the Johnson & Johnson news here in the triad. The federally funded mass vaccination site here in Greensboro is still trying to figure out what to do after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was paused this week. The clinic at the Four Seasons Town Center was supposed to use the Johnson & Johnson doses starting next week. While the site considers using more Pfizer and Moderna doses, the state emergency response team met earlier today to figure out a plan. We have requested and are, and are evaluating the possibilities with regards to extending operations here a few more weeks uh, to get even more of those shots in arms. As of right now, the clinic is set to close on May 4th. We'll make sure to keep you updated on the future date of the clinic on air and online as we learn more information. While state and federal officials figure out the best way to move forward with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, there are plenty of claims about the shot online, like one that says the process to get the vaccine out to the public was extremely rushed. Here's what our verified team found out. It's important to stress that health officials still don't even know if Johnson & Johnson is the cause of these rare but serious blood clots. But in the meantime, some have taken to social media with claims that the trials weren't thorough enough, even questioning the size of the phase three trial. So first, let's verify. Did Johnson & Johnson have a normal clinical trial size? Our sources are the FDA, the CDC, and doctors Tony Moody with the Duke Human Vaccine Institute and Brandon Traxler, South Carolina's interim public health director. FDA briefing documents show J&J &J had a phase three trial of about 40,000 participants. The CDC says a typical phase three trial has anywhere from hundreds to thousands. I think the important take home isn't so much that the trials were big or small, but they were the same size as we would typically do, even if a vaccine was on a sort of not accelerated path. Which begs the question, would such a rare event be picked up in a normal trial anyways? The condition is seemingly contradictory, clotting alongside low platelets, cells that are supposed to help the body with the clotting process. Out of roughly 7 million doses already administered, there have been six cases of this condition. A side effect that's a one in a million side effect might not emerge until millions of people had, had received that vaccine. Um, so it might not emerge during the clinical trials. So we can verify Johnson & Johnson did have a normal sized phase three clinical trial. And doctors say even with that, it would be difficult to pick up on such a rare health event and generate conclusive evidence on it. With your Verify, I'm Vanessa Rufus. Slowly but surely, our state's coronavirus hospitalizations are going up. Today, the state reported 1,064 North Carolinians are in the hospital with the virus. Now, it's just eight more than yesterday, but as you can see, it does extend our upward trend. This number has now gone up for five days in a row, and it's the highest number we've seen in more than a month. There's an interesting trend going on on the county level, so we'll take a closer look at that coming up at five. Let's get to your four to five roundup. The Biden administration is working to ensure the U.S. will have a booster COVID-19 shot if they are needed. Health officials say COVID variants make them necessary. This comes as drug makers are touting their progress in developing additional shots, which would be made to increase the body's immune response months after the first doses are administered. Two Indonesian hackers were arrested over a $60 million United States coronavirus scam. The hackers stole the money from a COVID-19 aid program, helping Americans left jobless by the pandemic. More than 20 million Americans received text messages directing them to a more than a dozen fake U.S. government websites. Victims gave up personal information to the fake sites in hopes to, of securing $2,000, but the info was used by the scammers to steal money from the program. Chicago officials released video Thursday of a police shooting that killed 13-year-old Adam Toledo last month. A body camera recorded March 29th shows an officer exiting his vehicle. 
and chasing Toledo who is running down an alley. The officer fired a single shot that struck Toledo in the chest as he raises his hands. He died on the scene. The video shows a gun on the ground, but Toledo's hands appear to be empty in a freeze frame from when he was shot. The newly released video sparked protest overnight. And final preparations are underway in Britain for the funeral of Queen Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip. He'll be laid to rest at Windsor Castle tomorrow. COVID restrictions have turned what would have been a grand ceremonial service into an intimate one. Only 30 guests, mostly relatives, will attend. The funeral will start at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Prince Philip was 99 years old. We're kind of turning back the clock a little bit in our spring season. We had been in the 70s and 80s. Now we're kind of going backwards a little bit. Still at this afternoon hour, we're only in the low and mid 60s. So a little on the cooler side and kind of breezy too. Can you tell? It's definitely on that windy side outside as we expected and told you yesterday. Winds are coming in out of the north generally. So that's why we have that cooler air than what we've been seeing recently. But a very pretty blue sky as we look over High Point. Here's Greensboro, similar situation. Maybe a couple of high level clouds. That's really about it. Temperature right now 64 degrees. Winds are coming in fairly steadily and that humidity. It's very, very low. We have that cool air in place. Burlington, look at the flex. Yeah, they're getting a workout today. 67 for you. Good amount of blue sky. Here are your current temperatures in your hometowns. Mountains are cool today in the 50s. Generally, we're all in the same boat here locally in the Piedmont. Uh, winds are, like I said, breezy, but those temperatures this morning, a little bit of a shock to the system. Check it out. We woke up into the 30s this morning and we'll probably get close to that yet again tonight. There are your breezes right at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Next couple of hours will still continue to be in the 60s, but after sunset, which is close to 8 o'clock, we'll start to get down into the low 50s and eventually low 40s by tomorrow morning. Here are my expected low temperatures. As you begin your weekend, your Saturday starting out on the cool side, and tomorrow will not be as pretty as today. One we'll more clouds, and those clouds occasionally for the midday and the afternoon could bring a stray shower. Not many, just a couple of sprinkles. That would be about it. Coming up, we'll talk more about your upcoming weekend, which looks to be a little bit better for Sunday compared to Saturday. And look at the seven day forecast shows our temperatures are not really wanting to budge all that much. Kind of hanging out in a comfortable zone, mostly 60s and 70s over the next week. It has been one year since 29 year old Patrick Gooch died in a car crash. He was driving on Interstate 840 when his truck went off the road and hit a bridge pillar, according to state troopers. In the 365 days since his passing, his family has learned more about Patrick than they knew. His sister shared how their world and memories of him have changed. He had called his wife Jessica a few minutes prior to the accident, and he had made a statement to her that he didn't feel great, he didn't feel good, and that he was going to get off on the next exit and maybe get something to eat, get something to drink, um, but he never made it off the exit. When a loved one passes, you may assume you'll be left with only the memories you have of them. It's rare that you learn more about who they are once they're gone. But that's exactly what happened to Patrick Gooch's older sister, Brittany Gooch Moose. We didn't know what kind of an impact Patrick had on other people returning from military lifestyle, making the transition into um, civilian lifestyle, college lifestyle, we didn't know. Patrick was a Marine veteran who served overseas in Afghanistan and here at home. His service continued in Chapel Hill with the Carolina Veterans Organization, helping fellow veteran college students transition into civilian life. Complete strangers called, emailed, came to the funeral. Um, we, we didn't know. And it was so amazing to see those stories as hard as they were to, to hear. Patrick's legacy is evident in the lives he changed, the love he had for his family, in his perfect match, his wife, Jessica, and in the son he never met. When the accident happened, Jessica, his wife, was expecting their baby. And Patrick was so excited to be a dad. Theodore Patrick was born in August of last year. Um, healthy, happy, and looks just like Patrick. Brittany remembers how much Patrick wanted to be a dad, how close they were, and how he cared for others. But she wants you to remember something about her brother, too. But I hope people remember his heart. 
he he just had a caring, giving heart. This is obviously a hard story for Brittany to tell, but she wants people to know about Patrick because he is still helping others even after his death. The Carolina Veterans Organization that Patrick was such an integral part of launched the Sergeant Patrick Googe Memorial Scholarship, and they're hoping to raise $100,000 to help other student veterans at UNC Chapel Hill. I'll have all that information for you on our website. The 4 to 5 is coming right back. Well, as we know, it's been a bad week for allergy sufferers around the triad. Nearly every day, the pollen count has been high for our trees. Yeah, about 25 million Americans suffer with seasonal allergies, but some are now reporting that they feel better than they mm -hmm. have in previous seasons. And doctors think a COVID prevention measure could be behind that relief. Ben and Sherry Rosen's seasonal allergies are so severe, their plants often revolve around the daily pollen count. Eyes are very itchy. Um, sometimes it's even hard to breathe. Sneezing, coughing, and I also have allergic asthma as well. But the couple says they've noticed some changes this spring. It's hard for me to, to speak sometimes just because the allergies are so bad and I haven't had any of that so far this year. Some studies suggest mask wearing may be playing a role in alleviating allergy symptoms. Israeli researchers looked at data on nurses who wore masks for two weeks. 40% with severe allergies reported less symptoms when they wore a mask. 54% with mild allergies said they felt symptoms improved. It almost acts like a barrier between you and the pollen when you're outside. Uh, it can even protect against indoor allergens if you, you know, wear a mask indoors while you're working or what have you, dust bites, mold. Dr. Porvi Parikh from the Allergy and Asthma Network says she tells patients to change clothes and shower to avoid bringing pollen into the house. So the same thing applies for masks. You don't want to keep putting that same mask that might have pollen on it on your face every day. You should be washing your mask frequently regardless. Ben and Sherry say even a little bit of relief is a good thing. I don't 
know if the mask has contributed to it, but um, I know overall, I, I feel like I've had much less allergy attacks than I've had in past years. The couple makes sure to take their medications and also gets allergy and asthma shots to help. Femi Redwood, CBS News. Hmm, the power of a face mask, keeping other people safe from your germs and maybe causing some less severe allergy symptoms. But I think the key there was make sure you're either changing out your mask often or washing it often because you don't want that pollen to sit on there. That yeah, might make it worse. Definitely. On a side note, I just want to say the pollen is real this year. My car is begging for oh, a yeah. trip to the car wash. Uh, but on another note, I've realized that my throat isn't as itchy this year or my eyes, and hmm. it could just be from wearing the mask. And I might not be the best person to ask this uh, topic just because I don't suffer from allergies usually. Now, I usually do get a kind of a seasonal head cold that happens when we go from winter to spring. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have that this year, and I do attribute that to the mask wearing. I, I mean, I haven't even had like a sniffle Jaylen in Jalen loves the mask. I, I'm all about the mask. <laughs> he loves the mask. We're going to see Jalen wearing a mask every single day for the rest of his life. Airports, concerts, you anything, would, large groups of people, football game maybe. Statement. Different colors. If y'all see the gear shift on my car, I've got like seven masks. Oh, okay, oh, look nice. at you. Yeah. But I will say, I um, went out of town this past weekend and it was on a plane. And when we got up in the air, you can literally look down and it was like a <gasps> yellow cloud. That's gross. Over, that's disgusting. Yeah, the city. <laughs> it was really, it was really gross. I was like, oh, that's why. That's what's happening. Yeah. In addition to the mask, though, they say there's some other ways to limit it, like taking your shoes off before you go into your house, mm -hmm. maybe even closing your windows, which you know, isn't the best because you know right now the weather is great, so you want to feel that breeze, but that can help to limit the pollen as well. Yeah, we wish all those allergy sufferers the best. Yeah, yeah keep wearing the masks, everybody. <laughs> the Florida Bible will be right back. We are live on Facebook and chatting with you, so that's where we're going right now. On the way. Matt or Jeffrey could just come in the weather garden like with a The power of love. I'm not talking about the Celine Dion song right now. <laughs> but I think we could all use a little more of love. But have you ever been curious what the physical manifestation of love felt like? Hmm. Well, today on Ute, uh, Coach Lamont shares a special story that will show all of us the power of love. There's a story of a young boy who miraculously overcame a rare blood disease. Many years later, the boy developed antibodies to combat the illness. 
This was hopeful because it was later discovered that his younger sister was diagnosed with the same disorder. The doctors recognizing that the brother's blood could actually save his sister's life, they spoke with him and asked him if he would be willing to give his sister his blood. It wasn't long before the little boy said yes. The transfusion began. You could see life returning to the sister while the brother grew pale and worried. He turned to the nurse and said, ma'am, how long till I die? See, he misunderstood the instruction and was willing to give his life for his sister. So my question for you is, what would you do in this situation if the person in need was a stranger? This is Coach Lamont reminding you to have your best you day. I'll see you tomorrow. At this point, we're going to talk about the weather, which across the triad today might be causing you to smile a little bit. Beautiful blue sky, a bit of a breeze. Everything is good to go. A little on the cool side, I know, especially early on. Check out that morning low. You see that? We were down there in the upper 30s to right around 40 degrees early on. If you were like me, and don't be like me, that's a bad idea, but I opened up my windows yesterday, left them open all night. In the morning, the house was 58 degrees, so a little on the chilly side. I'd recommend closing yours again tonight because we will be going down into the low 40s uh, yet again. There's our beautiful sunshine here in the Carolinas, but a couple of systems I want to just point out. This is almost a winter like appeal here in the northeast. You see that big swirling area. It's a nor'easter centered right around Boston. They've been getting plenty of snow showers across New England and parts of interior New York State seeing some rain and snow mix back here in the middle of the country. Some rain is happening from the high plains down across the deep south as well. That's the system I have my on for my eye on for tomorrow. I think mostly for us what we'll see just an increase in cloud cover. It's kind of drying out and passing to the south of us. So while there is a small chance of a scattered shower tomorrow, it's just a low chance of getting wet. If you were to see one, it would likely be in the afternoon or the early evening. Here's the time frame. There's your early Saturday morning. We see clouds starting to move into our area right around midday, maybe a peak of sunshine, but that's when a sprinkle or two would be possible. So overall, your weekend forecast, it's not looking too shabby. It's a cool one in the low 40s tomorrow morning, low 60s for tomorrow afternoon, and just a small chance of having a brief shower. Sunday looks to be drier and maybe a little bit warmer, getting into the upper 60s, which is pretty close to our seasonal average. Our average high right now is 70 degrees, actually. There's your weekend. We'll take a look at next week. Small chance of a shower on Monday, but overall staying fairly dry and fairly comfortable with highs in the 60s and 70s. You're watching the 4 to 5 here on News 2.
Lauren, I want you to tell me something. something good. I'll just let you take it from there. <laughs> it's Friday afternoon. Lauren can sing, I cannot. You're probably doing a million things right now, getting home from work, maybe fixing dinner, making plans for the weekend. But if you could take the next two minutes for a bit of reflection, we can almost guarantee you'll start your weekend with a smile. WFNY News 2's Megan Malaris makes it her mission each week to find the blessings being, bringing you joy. We know sometimes all the news happening around the world can weigh heavily on your heart. That's why it's really important at the end of the week to take a few moments to sit back and just relax and reflect on life's many blessings. I asked you on my Facebook page, Megan Malaris News, to tell me something good, big or small, happening in your life recently. Robin's new grandson Teddy was born March 19th. After 10 days in the NICU, he's home and doing great. Lisa's daughter got her dream job. Teresa watched her 10 year old grandson all week and had tons of fun. Charlie got to babysit a great grand dog, Jake, who's so adorable. Mary Ann's family took a trip to Walt Disney World. Lisa's first grandson is due in less than a month and she can't wait to meet him. Tommy's brother paid her a surprise visit. Teresa's youngest visited over the weekend. Deborah went to see her sister in Virginia for the first time in a year. Angie got her stimulus check and was able to buy groceries and pay a couple bills. Joanne got her first COVID vaccine and can't wait till she's fully vaccinated. Priscilla retired and is loving it. Robin had two mammograms that looked suspicious, then a biopsy. She's praising God the results were benign. Becky spent time in the hospital with COVID and double pneumonia. She had to learn to stand and walk again. She's doing better, counting her blessings and thanking God. And Wilma said waking up each day is a blessing and celebrating life. Nothing better. I think Megan's stories each week really put everything into perspective for me and just being able to hear what brings joy and what has made people smile this week. I, I love it. Absolutely. What you got good for us this week? All Lauren? right, a couple <laughs> things. So I met okay. my goal this week. I woke up at 5 a.m. four days this week. There we go. There Went we to go. to the gym. I saw you on social media. And I only ate out once. Good for you. You're on fire. On fire. On fire. Jalen. Well, <laughs> I got a golf get match set up with a good buddy this weekend, and I'm going to beat him down. That's my good news. <laughs> so nothing has happened yet, but you're anticipating Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm locked in. You know, I think my the best thing that happened to me this week, I um, have loved the stories I've gotten to cover. Uh -huh. I think that I've really been in touch with some incredible people remembering some amazing individuals this week. So I'm blessed that they uh, trust me to tell their story. Yeah, you had some great stories this week. Thanks. Felt them. Today's great story people. was a real tear. Beautiful. Tracker. Great people in the triad. Absolutely. What do you think? Got a break? Yeah. Let's go to Have break. a dance Come party. Chat Let's with go back us. To Come Facebook. dance with us That's on Facebook. I like that. I will not be dancing on Facebook. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> it is it is Music <laughs> Friday. We'll be so singing and dancing. Music. They will be singing. If you want to see Jalen sing and dance, come join us. Jalen will not be there. <laughs> but I'll we'll talk to him. you. We'll make him be there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, we have been in Paris at a beautiful cafe. Hello, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. When are we going to Paris, Timothy? When are we going? I want to. Oh, we're going to Paris. I've never been to Europe. Let's make it happen. I got a passport. Coming down to Jameson Stadium to take on the Grimsley Whirlies in the next couple of hours. I can hear myself. I can hear feedback. Happy Friday. Uh, let me talk to you, Matt. Matthew McNair. Ma ha ha ha. I remember one time I said, I said your wrong name, uh, or but, 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 ha, ha, I can't talk. Mike, check one, two. Years ago, I said your name wrong on air. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> yes. R.I.P. <laughs> life, life, life.
Well, good afternoon and welcome back to your 4 to 5. I'm Lauren Coleman here with Maddie Garner. We got Jalen Gilkey and Tim Buckley today. I love Fridays. Oh, so yeah. Do I. Who's feeling the Friday energy this afternoon? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, too. Really oh, feels like electric. a Friday. It's electric. I wish I was with, boogie, woogie, with woogie. Tim outside <laughs> with the nice weather. It's not. We got all kinds of room if you guys want to come out here. Yeah, I you might, always say you want to go and you never go, Lauren. Well, well, I don't have the right shoes on right now, <laughs> but if I did, I would be out there. Somebody get Lauren some flats and put her out in the weather garden. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on the 4 to 5. Did you know that we stream our entire show, including the commercial break mm. fun, on our Facebook page? Just head on over to WFNY News News page and join our conversation there. Yeah, come and chat with us because, of course, we have a lot to talk about. But first, we want to get into our headlines with your 4 to 5 roundup. North Carolina a t State University announced two new restrictions to help limit the spread of COVID-19. In a memo sent to students, the chance said student attendance at social gatherings where preventative measures are being ignored is fueling the growth in infections. In-person dining has been eliminated along with residence hall visitation. The university says it will offer takeout options for pickup and no inner hall visitation will be permitted over the remainder of the spring term. And one man is dead and another is injured after a drive-by shooting last night in Winston-Salem. Officers were called to the shooting shortly after 9 p.m. on Piedmont Circle. Police say someone fired shots into a group of people, killing 32-year-old Nashawn Sanders. The other victim has been released from the hospital. But police say this is the eighth homicide to happen this year compared to the five homicides this same time last year. So if you know any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. Health experts at Duke University say the United States could have 300 million excess doses of the COVID-19 vaccines by the end of July. Authors of the report say the projected surplus accounts for enough shots to share with countries having supply problems while also leaving enough to satisfy the demand here in the United States. Health experts came to the sum of 300 million by studying the production timelines and the U.S. government's advanced purchases of vaccines from companies. And today marks 10 years since North Carolina's record-breaking tornado outbreak. 30 tornadoes touched down in a single Saturday afternoon. The storms killed two dozen people and swept across as they swept across the state. It's a tragically high number that could have been higher if not for the advance warnings put out in days ahead of it as well as the day of. Investigators in Indiana are trying to figure out why a man shot and killed eight people at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis before taking his own life. Five other people were injured and one is still in critical condition in the hospital. Several people who survived the shooting described the chaotic moments that felt like a lifetime for them. My initial thought was don't die and escape. But then when I started seeing everybody roll up, from midnight shift. I have felt the need to help people. Federal investigators are now helping local police as they try to figure out the shooter's motive. President Joe Biden ordered flags at half staff at the White House. In a statement this morning, FedEx says the company is, quote, deeply shocked and saddened after the shooting, calling it a senseless act of violence. You know, one of the weather highlights here in the triad today was honestly this morning when we woke up uh, to such chilly air. Temperatures were in the 30s and low 40s. Right now, though, everything is pretty comfortable if you have to be outside. I'd recommend it, in fact, as long as you can stand the allergies. We do have some high cloudiness, but generally it's mostly sunny. 68 degrees, your temperature right now over high point. Let's take a look at Greensboro looking sharp as well with a lot of green on the trees. Certainly everything is greened up lately. 64 is your current temperature there in Burlington. Look at you, the wind always flapping those flags. We're at 67 at the moment. More hometown temperatures for you at this time. 66 in Winston-Salem, 65 up in Mount Airy, and hello to you in Montgomery County down at 70 degrees in Troy today. Take a look at those morning lows, though. One of the things I always think is interesting when you have a cold morning like this, uh, they can be a little random, at least appearance-wise. The valleys cool off more quickly, so even Siler City, take a look. 33 degrees, much cooler than some other spots. It really depends on your exact location because that cool air kind of collects in those valleys. Uh, winds are still steady right now. It's not terribly windy, but it is breezy and it'll stay that way the rest of the afternoon. Perfect weather going into this evening. Football games look great, but overnight tonight we will get chilly again, generally in the low 40s. So that's what you start off with Saturday. There will be more cloudiness than what we saw today. So I generally think tomorrow is a gray day of weather. 
not all that wet, just a low chance of a shower in the afternoon, only about a 20 to 30% chance of getting a little bit wet. Coming up, we'll talk a little bit more detail about your seven day forecast, which overall continues to be comfortable. All right, thank you, Tim. Well, have you noticed the new art at the Friendly Center? Well, it's all about all of the Friendly Center and the Greensboro's Chambers new partnership to highlight local artists. Sarah Kolonicki, the center's marketing director and local artist Gina Elizabeth Franco partnered up for four different pieces of art right by the gathering area near Ben and Jerry's and Kolonicki is hopeful more artists can be added throughout the year. Now that it's here, we're really excited to be able to be more connected with the art community through Gina and hopefully through other artists that reach out to us. Um, and it would be great to be able to highlight different artists um, at different times of the year. Very cool. And get this, if you take a pic with the art, uh, use the hashtag ShopFriendlyCenter on Instagram posts and you can enter to win a gift card. I like free things. So I nice. also am a big fan of Gina Franco's artist did this mural. She has done a lot around Greensboro. I'm sure you have seen many of them. And I did a story with her a few years ago, and it was just fascinating to see her process and how she makes these giant works of wow. art. I love how the Friendly Center is using this space as an opportunity to showcase our local artists and to just show that what the talent that we have here in the triad. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I've only been here for about five weeks and I've noticed the city really embraces the art. Mm -hmm. I think the Friendly Center is a great place to have this because just within the last few weeks, I've been there at least six times already. <laughs> so I know they get a lot of uh, footwork there. Uh, so that's great to celebrate the local artists a that lot way. Of, a lot of traffic in mm -hmm. that area. A good place. Got everything you need. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And we love to shop. Let's and we love local till art. We drop. So there you go. It'll be a great day to go out there actually and check out the art. But you know what else it is a great day for? Friday, football, fever. Can't I was kind it. of hoping y'all would all say it with me. Okay, oh, let's say it again. One, two, you know what three. it's a great day for? Friday, Friday football, football, fever. fever. And there we go. this Friday is a little special <laughs> because tonight is the start of high school football playoffs. Luke is standing by for our game of the week. Hey, Luke. Friday, football, fever. I got you, Matt. I wouldn't leave you hanging. Uh, but yes, happy Friday, everybody. It's a perfect day for some high school football. Like you mentioned, round one of the high school football playoffs kick off a little bit later tonight in our game of the week. It's a very good one. We got the two-time defending champs in East Forsyth coming down to Jamison Stadium to take on the Grimsley Whirlies with kickoff set at around 7.30 p.m. And this is a very interesting matchup because in the 4A West Regional matchup, uh, which is tonight, this uh, will be the programs, both of the programs, eighth meeting in five years with East Forsyth beating Grimsley in each of the last two postseasons. So we know the playoffs are a very different animal. And to even make it to this point during a pandemic, no less, it's already quite an accomplishment in itself. And to make it this year, it's even, you know, almost twice as sweet because it was, it was harder to make it this year. You know, and, and and to make it to 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 share a conference title with Glenn and to, and to make this in our tough conference is just it's very rewarding. But we don't want to stop here. That's the key. Coach Willard also saying that they're going to treat tonight just like any other regular season game. Although it's a little different. If you lose, your season is completely over. But no pressure, right? Uh, Still looking forward to this one. We have a lot of good games going on around the region. Of course, all of your highlights coming your way later tonight right here on WFM News 2 at 11 o'clock as we get ready for some playoff action during Friday football. Say it with me. Fever. Back to you. As the state treasurer of North Carolina, when I attempted to find out what I'm spending $2 billion of taxpayer money on, on behalf of those that teach, protect, and serve, this is what was sent to me as the actual price list. All right, look at all those redacted pages. North Carolina Treasurer Dale Falwell has been pushing for transparency in healthcare pricing. But getting all hospitals and facilities to agree to put all their pricing out there for mm -hmm. all consumers to see isn't easy, even though there is now a federal requirement. Yeah, that's right. The new mandate uh, went into effect in January. And while many facilities have a web page dedicated to it, not all of it is really easy to read. Yeah, kind of like when you get a medical bill or mm -hmm. an insurance statement in mm -hmm. the mail. They, they can be kind of confusing, Tanya. Absolutely. So according to his data, Treasurer Falwell says the cost of health care has gone up in Guilford County 15% from 2012 to 2016. And while consumers can only do so much about what facilities charge, he says they need to be on top of whatever bills they get. 
when they get a bill, scrutinize it. Uh, many of your viewers are getting bills in the mail and they don't know if they had an apodectomy or a tonsillectomy. And uh, so scrutinize the bill to make sure that they're being charged for, for the services they actually received. Well, speaking of healthcare, ACA Marketplace enrollment has been extended until August. Today, we have three experts in to talk health insurance of all kinds, including the ACA Marketplace and Medicare. You can text your questions to our experts, 336-379-5775. Well, last year was tough on many industries across the nation, but none of them were hit quite as hard as the hotel and travel industries. Now, as travel restrictions are loosening up, our area is seeing an increase in visitors. WFMI News 2's Jalen Gilkey talked to a representative from the Guilford County Hotel Association at the job fair they hosted in downtown Greensboro today. Well, after a year where most hotels had to lay off a considerable portion of their staff, hotels are looking to hire again, including 13 hotels in Guilford County alone. The Guilford County Hotel Association is excited to host today's job fair and the GCHA is even more excited to welcome guests and staff back to the grounds. Who would have ever thought that the sound of people just talking would be so missed. We are seeing a resurgence of guests that want to come back and want to stay. It's all pent up demand from the pandemic that people are wanting to travel. Megan Weathersby is the general manager at the Greensboro Downtown Marriott. She says in all her years in the business, she's never seen a year like 2020. So it's been over a year. It was March 2020 where I had to lay off 95% uh, of my team. But Megan and her colleagues from the Guilford County Hotel Association are happy to say business is up and so is the demand for more employees. 
to be able to see that we've been running on a skeleton crew because there just not has been the demand. And now to see that that demand is there is so overwhelming. Um, I have gotten to call back some furloughed associates that have been in the building 35 years, literally opening the doors. And I got to call one of them back two days ago and say, hey, we're opening breakfast and we want you to come back. Today, the GCHA hosted a job fair to let the community know that all 13 hotels in Guilford County are looking to hire. We are hiring. The doors are open. So if you can't come down here today and see us from 10 to 2, please call your local hotel. If you're interested in the hospitality industry, we are looking for great people. Like Megan just mentioned, even if you weren't able to make it to the, today's event, no worries. Most of our local hotels are looking to hire. So just pop on in, give them a call or give them a call. Whatever works best for you. I mean, I knew that this industry was hit pretty hard, but when she said 95% of her staff she had to lay off last year, I mean, goodness gracious. So this is the time to really start supporting them again and getting people back on the payroll. Yeah, I saw that firsthand. So during the pandemic, I did a couple staycations mm -hmm. and one of the hotels that I stayed at, um, there was no one in the lobby really. And I was so excited to do uh, breakfast and they closed the restaurant down and they just said the demand wasn't there. So it's exciting to see more positions will be filled so our next vacation stays will be pleasant. Yeah and I have stayed in one hotel since the pandemic and I've made some similar observations to you. The mm -hmm. staff is significantly slimmer, restaurant, bar, everything that you would, all the amenities that you mm -hmm. would think would be included in a hotel not available but now glad to see things are opening back up and we're able to do, you know, get things back to close to normal. Can't wait. Yeah, and I'm sure they're hiring for a variety of positions because so many people, uh, it takes so many people to run a hotel. So mm -hmm. I definitely reach out. Thanks for letting us know about that, Jalen. Yeah. Great story. Great story. Thank you. All right. You know what else is great? What's happening on Facebook? We're yes. having fun today. We're it's having Friday. a dance party. Come join us. We're just uh, fun I'm done. Y'all missed it. <laughs> Jalen did the electric slide. That was it. That's all <laughs> we'll I got. We'll see you on Facebook and we'll see the rest of you after the break.
Well, we probably have all had to deal with bugs or small rocks hitting our windshield from time to time, but what about a fish? Yeah, you heard me correctly, a fish, because that's exactly what happened to this truck driver in Randolph County. Barry Poff was driving on I-73 over Randleman Lake when a bird carrying a fish, look at that, dropped it straight into Poff's windshield. Whoa! Fortunately, Poff was okay and he was able to pull over and you'll be able to hear Poff's reaction to the once in a lifetime uh, chance later tonight on WFMY News 2 at 11. I whoa, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, let's, what? Let's check it out. So the bird just I mean, it one, just, two, just three it. and splat. Boom. I mean, you can see the, the fishiness. On All right, the question. Splats. Who was more upset, the truck driver or the bird? <laughs> the bird lost his lunch, so I don't know. Oh man. What would you do? <laughs> what would you do if you were driving down know. the road and a fish hit your windshield? Well, at least it would make me more comforted. I would be more comforted knowing I am by a lake. So like, you know, <laughs> but right. like, if I'm just driving and there's no water, <laughs> but I, I still don't know. This right is, there. This I is, like it. This is nuts. I'm just glad he was okay because he looks like he's driving over an overpass. What yes, if he like, like what if he veered off the exactly. road? I mean, because I, I don't like it when a bee gets in my car. So a fish, no. I, I, would, I wouldn't know how to react. You Very think, good move on the truck driver's yeah. part. You think our truck drivers are fishermen? Oh, wow. Possibly. Yeah, why? I'm just asking. No, oh, okay, it was just, just random. Just asking. I mean, it was truly a flying fish. A flying fish hit his windshield there. Yeah, well, it's okay. And then look at the splatter at the end. Hopefully yeah, that's, that's just, the worst part, just water it? and not, no, that's, you know, inside. So be careful anyway. <laughs> if you're driving in Randleman. Just be careful. I get fish. hit with a fish. Tim, you ever had a fish anything. hit your windshield? Anything? Nope. Uh, mosquitoes? What else? Maybe that's about it. Just a lot of bugs. I suppose. I don't want any fish to be in my car. Uh, bizarre story. I wouldn't have believed that if I hadn't Watch the four to five, so I learned something today. Uh, thanks, everybody. Here's what we have right now across the southeast. We're in a good position. Uh, blue sky abound across North Carolina. Weather's really nice, as you know, today. Very comfortable here in our part of the country. But let's take a little bit of a trip up the coast. You see here, big swirling weather maker. Snow is falling in a good chunk of New England at this time. And in the middle of the country, it's more rain. We see this from Texas up into the southern plains as well. What are we dealing with this weekend? Well, it won't be quite as nice as it is right now, but it's not that bad either. Tomorrow, the main idea is that we're going to see clouds increasing, and that's partly because of the system that moves to our south. It'll send some gray sky our way. Now, it is possible we could get a scattered shower here or there. Not very many of those, so I'm only worried about rain this weekend. Overall, we're pretty dry. Sunday should be a little bit of a better day overall. We see low 60s for tomorrow, and there's just more cloud cover. Sunday has a better chance to kind of be on the sunnier side. More blue sky, a little bit on the warmer side, and overall, just a pretty good day. And that's the way our weekend shakes out. As far as the rest of the forecast is concerned, well, we should stay mainly dry next week. Chance of a stray shower on Monday, right up to 70 on Tuesday. But it does get cold again. We'll be in the mid 60s for Wednesday and Thursday with overnight lows right around 40 degrees. Now it's reversed. Officials say more young people are ending up in the hospital due to COVID and they want to. 
I can. Mic check. One, two, three. April 16th, 2021. Today. I can hear you loud and clear. Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey. Go. Julie, like, mic check, please. One, two, three, one, two, three. I now know how to raise my hand in Zoom. I just I just turned on I just turned the uh, internal mic. Luke is coming around. The Check. Can you hear me? One, two, four. For me. As humans, we are always on the go, often in a rush. I honestly lost count of the number of drivers who either cut me off or zoomed past me on the interstate this week, well above the speed limit. Just yesterday, I found myself waiting impatiently at a red light. It felt like an eternity, but I'm sure it was just a couple of minutes. But this made me think, why are we always in such a hurry? The light eventually turned green and I made it to my destination. And hopefully the folks speeding past me on the interstate got to where they needed to be safely. But rushing can sometimes have a negative impact on our lives. It can cause us to make rash decisions. For example, trying to move up the ladder at work too quickly. You may not gain the experience you need to prepare yourself for that leadership role. Jumping into a relationship too fast. You may not give yourself enough time to learn if the person you're dating shares your same values. Or how about Living above your means, saving money for that nice car or home may help in the long run. You'll be able to enjoy the finer things in life without the extra debt and extra stress. No matter the scenario, slowing down and just taking a moment can give us clarity. So just like driving, we'll eventually get to our destination, but we want to make sure that we get there with a clear head and with better judgment. But that's just my two cents. That's your 4 to 5. WFNY News 2 at 5 starts now. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the majority of the people hospitalized were older people and younger people seem to be less impacted. Now it's reverse. A 